All right. This one is by request. If um, you're going to be doing any form of uh, technical certifications that has networking with it, you're bound to cross paths with the OSI reference model, <clears throat> uh, discussing um, the different layers in the network uh, stack. Start off with the story. Um, when I was approaching close to 20 years of experience, I had a master's degree in information technology, been working in carrier networking for a long time. A company I was working for was starting to have financial troubles, and I was starting to entertain um, some uh, interviews. And a gentleman who was running a network shop uh, for a company called XBO uh, Logistics um, had um, a Cisco-centric team and he was considering bringing me on and I was coming from a Juniper stop shop and um, he started off by asking me a question um, what are the seven layers of the OSI model and there I was um, on a phone screen interview uh, for a higher level network engineering position um, with graduate degree uh, almost 20 years worth of experience I had no idea I could not remember for the life of me what the seven layers of the OSA model were. Um, I remember having them memorized uh, cold uh, when I took my CCNA back in, uh, I think it was 1999 is when I took my first CCNA test. Um, and I um, took a CCDA back then also, and it's referenced in the CCDA. I think it's also uh, referenced in uh, Linux certification tests like uh, the Red Hat uh, System Administrator and Engineer test when it refers to networking. Uh, several CompTIA tests refer to the uh, seven layers of the OSI model and its counterpart uh, from the uh, TCP model. Um, but I had no idea and I shouted out two. I think I said uh, the network, the transport, and uh, the physical, I couldn't remember data link. Um, and he said, okay, well, thank you. We're gonna end this interview. And um, so the interview ended with that, me not knowing the seven layers of the OSI model. <clears throat> After that, I kind of assessed uh, where I was in my career path and recognize that really what the market wants is someone able to answer certification questions. It doesn't really matter how much value you can bring to the team as far as experience and uh, the ability to architect networks and provide support and rapid troubleshooting, um, administration of uh, infrastructure, all those things really don't matter if you can't answer the questions that are gonna be posed in an interview setting which are centric around certification questions. And as a result, I decided um, I had no certifications. I just had a graduate degree in experience. Those were the things. I had an undergraduate degree, so I've got an undergraduate degree in basically management information systems. I've got a graduate degree in information technology and um, years of experience and no certifications. Um, the reason I got the graduate degree is because I thought it would be more valuable than getting some certifications that would just fade away after a couple of years. Uh, but it turns out the way the job market currently is and was 10 years ago um, and is likely to stay this way is it's very certification centric. Um, information technology is one of the white collar uh, professions where you can come in and um, undergraduate degrees are not really necessary as long as you have certifications and sufficient knowledge in order to get started. Uh, I'd say about half the people in my department don't have a undergraduate degree and very few have graduate degrees. However, okay, so there I was. And so I started a path of obtaining certifications. Uh, first thing I did was uh, look at the CCNA and realized that it was now split into two certification tests. Uh, February 2019 changed that, but back at, when I started uh, certifications again, um, it was two tests, the ICND-1 and the ICND-2. Uh, ICND-1, basically I just did it cold. I just showed up and I took the test, finished it. Didn't get as high of a score as I wanted. Uh, second one, I tried the same thing and failed. Then I realized I needed a book um, in order to get uh, the objectives um, 
more uh, understood. I was coming out of a juniper background, and plus there was other things that I just basically didn't have knowledge of. And um, so uh, OSI model memorization was a part of that. So I, I did ICND-1, ICND-2, and then I stopped, and then I, uh, instead of continuing on the uh, CCMP track, I stopped and I did the CCDA, uh, which is no longer a certification you can get. But I did the CCDA also. It's a certification that I like. I, I kind of am into the whole network design um, track of Cisco certifications. Um, so uh, with those two under my belt, the process of memorizing these uh, layers became a necessity. And uh, after I had my CCNA, CCDA, had I been approached by XPO Logistics, uh, the interview would have been uh, much better. I could have rattled them off and discussed all these layers for about 30 minutes if need be. Anyway, so on request, someone was asking how to memorize these and how to think about them. In computer networking, uh, most of the time you're dealing with these three layers right here, two, three, and four. This is where our work day revolves around. And I guess physical to some extent, but mostly troubleshooting doesn't revolve around physical. If a link is up or down, it's pretty uh, transparent. It's uh, these layers that we focus around. However, I found a mnemonic that when I went to go into a certification test proctor uh, environment. Um, I Typically, you're given either a piece of paper or a wipe erase uh, sheet with an expo marker or with, a, uh, with an erasable marker. And um, this is what I write down, the first letter of each of these layers. <clears throat> and the way I memorize it is with a mnemonic. A mnemonic is where there is a word for every letter uh, that's easy to memorize instead of these words. Uh, and the mnemonic is, please do not throw sausage pizza away. Again, please do not throw sausage pizza away. And I'd get into a proctoring room, and one of the first things I would do is I would write down PDNTS. P A and that would give me the layers of the OSI model. That way, anytime they throw me a curveball with an OSI uh, model question, it was sitting right there and staring at me, and I didn't even have to think about it anymore. I didn't have to go through my mnemonic. The letters were sitting right there, and I had them all down cold. Um, and I think I only got like out of those three tests, I may have only got one question on each test about the OSI model. Uh, if that, it's actually not something heavily tested in uh, Cisco tracks, at least the tests that I took, um, just reference to them. However, it is kind of mentioned in uh, networking uh, worlds. And as I said, when I had the XBO logistics um, uh, job interview, I knew these because these are ones that we actually work with uh, on a daily basis. So um, the uh, network layer, the layer three, and we generally don't refer to them with the words. We just use the numbers. Is it layer two? Is it layer three? Or is it layer four? Um, and um, we would have occasional discussions about troubleshooting situations, and we would refer to these layers of the OSI model. Hey, is that a layer two problem or is that a layer three problem? And um, stateless firewalls uh, live up here on layer four. Uh, so that's the basic uh, approach that I used. Uh, going into each one of these, I'm not going to do. Uh, someone out there did ask for an uh, easy way of memorizing them. And if there is a certification uh, proctoring environment you're going into, I do recommend please do not throw sausage pizza away. Uh, be used as a mnemonic. It's a pretty common one. And then when you get there, just write down the first letters of that mnemonic. And that way you'll have the seven layers of the OSI model. Um, something that is good to know, and these are notes from my CCDA test. You can see the mnemonic right there. Um, is that BGP is actually up on layer seven. Uh, this is a Cisco sucker punch question. Um, 
that is pretty famous. It's like, what layer on the OSI model is BGP? And the answer is seven. Um, oddly enough, OSPF is a layer two protocol. And uh, BGP uses uh, IP in order to transport itself. BGP itself is a layer seven uh, protocol. It uses layer three IP in order to transport itself. Um, OSPF is different. OSPF does not use IP in order to transport itself. OSP uses OSPF, uh, its own protocol, which is a layer two protocol in order to trans, in order to establish uh, communication. Um, and that's why MTU is very important uh, when you're making OSPF neighborships and establishing adjacencies. Uh, Ethernet is a data link layer protocol and encryption is on the presentation layer. So we got BGP up here, we got IPsec here, we got stateless firewalls here on layer four, uh, we got IP and IPv6 here on layer three uh, layer two protocols, a good one to think of is OSPF. And then there's a whole series of physical medium, which things are transported on. So right here, the network interface layer, oh, the, this is the TCP model, which is a slightly scaled down version from the OSI model. And there's debate about if one's gonna win over the other. The truth is none of them are really used in everyday life. We don't sit here and ask each other questions about this. Um, we, we just, in, in order to pass certification tests, you do need to have this memorized. Anyway, hope that helped.